โอ้โห I'll be all right, Mr. Narhodo. After them, go. Behind that door, in the storeroom. Hurry! Or oh wait, that was that was Sholm saying that. Oh my God! It's it's Gina. Oh, a body has been discovered. From that moment, Wendy makes Palm broke where he became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the question. It was just before dawn, before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Hmm. Oh, Iris. Standing there in the distance. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Helly and Ginny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Runa? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard to not let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Mm, yes, I'm afraid so. <gasps> Oof. Events at Windybank. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windybank is dead. Fine, boom. Ha <laughs> ha! He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all of those police carriages pulling up outside his shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Windy Banks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the street, and I chased after them, but they got away. So, it was one of them who shot old Mr. Windybank, I suppose. I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. G Ginny? But why? Well, the thing is... No, Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know. None of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were at the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? They weren't caught. After all, they shot Hurley dead, didn't they? No! I I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Uh, this is all so horrible. Oh, uh, great. Now she's going to write a uh, book, a novel about uh, the death of Herlock Sholmes. And then the very next book is about how, oh, he faked his death. <laughs> the thing is, Mr. Windybank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storm door was locked from the inside. Yeah, the uh, death of Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if that was the call, but yeah, the, the one, the story where Sherlock Holmes dies, that was supposed to be the last... Sherlock Holmes story, but it was just so popular, so, uh, much to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's chagrin, he had to write, he had to bring him back. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no! And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards. Don't tell me. There was no one else in the room. If they made this game today, they probably could have just called him Herlock Sh Sh Sherlock Holmes. I've said Herlock so many times it's become normalized because he's public domain now. I guess he wasn't public domain when this game was made or something. I don't know. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Bruno? Well, uh, what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, damned if I don't. 
Uh, so anyway. So where's Hurley then? Is he still there investigating the scene? He really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. Uh, I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about Mr. Sholmes. <gasps> he was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Well, um, when we entered Wendy Banks, a gun was fired and he took a bullet. <gasps> Hurley was shot? N no, no, it's, it's all right. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He He's at St. Sinners. Sinners? Sinners. They're tending to him there. St. <laughs> Sinners. I must see him. At once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. To operate? Oh, poor Hurley. Injured Sholmes. It was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windybank's shop. They shot Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed them, you see. Uh, it was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I, I just froze. After them! Go! Ooh, the, the, the thugs? Are the... After that, I ran out onto the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I... I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I let them get away. I think... That's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them... You might have been shot as well, Runo. Ah. On top of everything else, I... I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris... Also, Suzado uh, summoned to court, so... Where's Susie, Runo? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there, then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Mrs. Otto stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholmes, so they didn't get started until later. Ah, uh, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris... I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving early. You should have let me know, and I would have come to the station. Uh huh. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment, but I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting along. I want to go too. Take me with you, Rudo. Eh. I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a ten-year-old child to the scene of a murder. I don't want to leave her all alone here, either. Alright then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh, yes. I'd love to. Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Ah, now you can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Alright. A new location has been added. Prison! Hello, Gina. Alright, then. Why'd they let her keep that? <laughs> like, seriously, every time someone we talk to someone in jail, they just, like, got a bunch of shit with them. Playing cards, fucking, uh, smoke grenades, fucking, uh, wristwatch. They're just asking for people to bust out of prison. <laughs> Oh, you set off the grenade launcher Hurley and I made. I wish you... I wish you wouldn't point that at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Tinny? I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Eh. Well, you can't. Sorry. You what? Get lost. 
Don't be like that, Jenny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. Never shoot someone with a bullet. You think you know me? Pull the other one. The what now? You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. Yeah, but you're not a killer. And if I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. But... Just to see what I could leave me hands on, get it? That's the kind of person I am. And I love that about you, Jenny, but... Jenny, I'll be in Guatemala, they said. Some cop came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me, or they like, said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. She couldn't be staring at me any more obviously if she tried. Why are you being like this, Jenny? <sighs> well, first, I have to present my attorney's armband. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> she locked... She fucking pickpocketed me through my prison cell. I'm a real lawyer. I'm a real lawyer. I don't understand, you know. Why did he send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be rigged anyway. The whole trial. They'll pin it on me because I'm a kid. And that's what grown-ups always do. Yeah. Why do you think that? Because that's how it always been for me, growing up in the back slums, me whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers. Or worse. I've had it happen to me before, and all. Been sold out and nearly snaffled on the back of it. You can't trust no one, that's the point. Soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could forget it. Jenny. Don't you trust Runa? Nah, I don't. I did hope you get your coat back. Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. <sighs> At least tell me what happened. Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbroker's. Ah. <sighs> There's nothing to tell. I figured it'd pay me, so I broke into the back. So I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. But the old bloke walked in on me and, you know the rest. Are you saying you did shoot him? But why, Jenny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? <sighs> oh, give it a rest. What'd be the point anyway, eh? There's nothing I could say would make a blind bit of difference. Uh, you wanted a fucking desk. Please tell us, Jenny. We'll believe you. Whatever it is. Oh, uh, sorry. Believe me. Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. It's my job to believe people. And you know what? When it comes to lawyers, I'm the biggest of the law. I've I've told some unforgivable lies, I have. Well, well, what do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? I'm a liar, dog. One of us tells the truth, and the other one always lies. You see, if, if you have one of the guards say that, well, what if he's the liar? So what you gotta do is have... One of the guards say, I always tell the truth, and the other one always lies. Because both of them would say that, right? That's how you do it. What did you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're gonna want to question me now. Jenny, please. Oh, yeah. I want to give you this. Something to remember me by. 
They're gonna give her the rope if she's declared guilty. They, 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 they fuck. This is Victorian. This is, this is England. They, they'll, they'll kill you for stealing a spoon. A photographic print of a really adorable cat. Ugh. I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Ain't no point in me having it. I wonder what a little photograph looks like, like that was doing in the pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Jenny. The white cat photograph has been entered into the court record. The law on its majestic equality forbids the rich and poor alike to sleep under bridges, steal their bread, and beg in the streets. Uh. Yeah. St. Sinus Hospital, Ward 3. Hallie! Oh! Huh. He's not here? No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know what's probably happened. Hell, he was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he's been sent home. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Baby or not, there's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholm suffered. Oh. Hello, hello, whatever, yeah. Oh, uh, this ward is off limits. No visitor. So what are you doing in here, eh? What's all this, then? Well, I'll have you know, we're Holly's next of king. Well, she is, I'm... Oh, well, begging your pardon, then, ma'am. Sir? A little lady and a curious eastern gentleman. The great mystery solver has a mysterious family, eh? Maybe that's how you see us, um... Sure. Dude, stand up for yourself. <laughs> Don't let this guy be racist. Where is he, constable? Where's Holly? I believe he is currently in the operating theater, Mom, undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear, is he going to be alright? Well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The anesthetic, that is. Oh! I have heard a report that the gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. Ha. <laughs> Anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Hurley. Is that a chamber pot? Notice board on the wall here. Let's see, what does it say? Thought of the day. On seeing any vermin, calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh yes, they have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. If you don't deal with them, there's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? Oh, I see. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Sholmes' sake. Let's go... Well, I... well, maybe I missed something else. Come on. Nope. 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 Nothing there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Uh... What's that? Not important. This must be Mr. Sholmes' bed. Poor Hallie. I know. Looks as stiff as a board, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think that will bother him. No. I often find him asleep face down on the floor, completely dead to the world. I think I'd call the police if I discovered something like that. Uh, he guys are... Oh, nothing for us here. Let's see. Prison, show him swing, uh, Let's go to... Maybe the... Can we investigate the palm brow career? Lindy Banks palm brokery. Damn. 
This is where it happened, then, last night? That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. But, apart from the policeman in here, you wouldn't know anything that happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. Like a gang of organized criminals all dressed in black. Boy, I heard that. Oh, fuck. Oh, Inspector, uh, good morning. Huh, I suppose I ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before I was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. Ah, so you believe me. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you'd assign extra men to the beach around here, Gregsy. Now look what's happened. Hurley's been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. And our friend took the fall for the thing. Ah! Your lady, shut up. No one told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. <clears throat> ah, of course, your lady, shut The very best doctors in the capital are attended to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Nah, the uh, Absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, Bob. As you say. Right, then. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. I'm not! Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Would you believe it? He's like a completely different person with ours. Talk about a personality change. Oh, oh well, me bonus. Are you thirsty, your ladyship? Perhaps you'd like some juice? Some nice, refreshing fruit juice? Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Gregsy? <laughs> Fuck! I have some of my special herbal tea with me. If you'd like some. Ah. Uh, oh, yes. Mm, quite. Mm, nah. Oh, good heavens. Ah, lovely. Ta, very much. That really hits the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. Well! This branch proves I'm a law- I'm a lawyer! Inspector Gregson, look! Can we be a bit about this, do you think? We don't tend to share sunshine, not with the general public. Ugh. In that case, Gregson, how about some herbal tea? God fucking damn it! Man, drink some tea. How much tea you drinking? Tea, 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 tea. What? I saw what? What the fuck happened? I don't know what got over me. Uh, the investigation. I don't need to know about. So, how's the investigation going, Inspector? Uh, nothing to it, really. Very simple case, this. There's some very definitive evidence. We are just about to charge that diver we arrested last night, in fact. But what about the two rogues? The two rogues! You know that they exist! You're gonna charge her? That's right. Should be able to bring it in before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Uh, your ladyship, as, as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid. Ah, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How, how could you? How? Oh! Deduction. How could you possibly know that? Oh boy. I had a feeling, that's all. Power deduction. Remind me never to try to keep a secret from Iris. So you've arrested two men who shot the two men who shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? Well, yes. They were brought it up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison? She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer, of course. How's Mr. Sholmes? Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. This would be a hospital matter. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. 
I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy. No visiting at all. Oh. Fuck. The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff. He's lot of stuff there, better blood, hasn't he? Oh, no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway. Oh, why did I say that so accusatory? He's having emergency surgery right now. They gotta stop that blading. But he will be alright, won't he? They'll be able to make him better. Uh, of course, your ladyship. He'll be as right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you do know? Eh, how do I know? Well, uh, uh, because, uh, of course. Oh, uh, 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 yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective. That's why. Don't patronize me. You better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Yeah, it's only been a while before we stopped using bloodletting and leeches and lobotomies. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theater. Well, uh, let's go. Oh, what? I can't... Huh. Oh, wait. All right, then. Let's see what we can uncover. Oi, what do you think you are doing, Sunshine? You can't touch anything in there. Oh, uh, but we were hoping to investigate. This is a crime scene for Pete's sake. No touching. I won't touch anything. I just want to look. What's the problem, Gregsy? Runa's a lawyer. You know that. I even showed you my fucking armband. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, Your Ladyship. Ever so sorry. The rules and regulations are a thorn in my side. Of course, if Mr. Norholder wants to have been properly appointed by the accused, was to have been properly appointed by the accused, that'd be another matter. The accused. If you could show me some representation papers, I'd be only too happy to let you know it's around. Um, did you hear that, Runo? You need Jenny to sign some representation papers. Looks like presenting the detective here with the correct paperwork is the only way. Okay, then. Uh, I will see you. Ah. Whose cat is this, yo? Gina, about this photograph. Oh, that. I just found it in one of the pockets of this coat, that's all. Check it if you don't want it. So, Miss McGilded didn't give it to her. There's some are written on the back, I think. There is. Don't mean nothing to me, though. I don't read so well anyway, especially not that scrawl. I really ought to examine the photograph more thoroughly, I think. Okay, let's see what we got here. Look on the back of this print here. There's something written on it. 13th of February, 9pm. Article deposited. One small box. Loan amount paid, 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th of April, 9pm. So this photographic print is a redemption ticket? 13th of February? That could be significant. It was just two days before the murder on the omnibus, wasn't it? A small box doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Bruno, if Mr. McGill did still have the ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So do you think this box might still be present somewhere in the shop? Ah, yes! If it's something McGill did deposit, we need to investigate. Yeah, but it's a ticket. Hmm. But we can't exactly... Or can we can't exactly do business at the pawn shop, or can we? Oh, fuck you. I don't want to see your. I don't want to read this. Ah. Did I leave the stove on? Nah, I couldn't have. Well... He 
Here, Gina, look at this. No, Ta. I, I wasn't saying you could have it. Oh, want ya? Heh. <laughs> well, when someone says I can't have stuff, it makes me want it, see? So you better hand it over now. No, I'm not giving it to you! You fucking... <sighs> Man, this is horse shit. Uh... That ain't gonna work. Uh... You... Box. Uh... Do I have to do this conversation? Fine. Oh, I couldn't help notice it, Inspector. Out with it, sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, sonny. I'm a copper, and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. I'm gonna hang myself. It's because of those adventures of her like show stories. That's why. Oh. I crop up in him, don't I? Spectre Tobias Grigson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Harley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Hmm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholm's designs. Gregson is the smartest of the skull and Yardis, is how he put it. Eh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell ya. Oh, that's amazing. All because everyone at the Yard reads them. They read all the Herlock Sholmes stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time you became such a toady to me. <laughs> Can you blame me? All it takes is one bad word from you and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Gregson? Nah, the great detective will say. He's getting quite overrated these days. Uh, I'd think what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? <laughs> Why would the, the whole thing gives me the willies? I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worrying about it. But that would never happen, Gregsy. Every month when the new Rats magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. No, <laughs> mm, oh, yes, quite. Oh, oh, oh good heavens. Ah, lovely. Ta very much. That really hit the spot. You all finish up. Tea total. What? Oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Narhodo. Yes, what is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about until now. An important message. I wonder what it could be. Ugh, core blimey. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side. Your assistant. <gasps> Dear Susie, is she alright? She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope, not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Stronghart's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah, yes, of course. I'd forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her there in a yard carriage after we finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey and had to go meet her there. She's got a nerve of her using Scotland Yard as a blooming messaging service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I'd better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. Okay, so now we got more shit to do. Because we can't just get the fucking... We can't just get the... She doesn't want us to represent her. She doesn't want us to represent her. So it's going to be a while before we can investigate the crime scene. Ugh. Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. It's been a while since I voiced Sean Hart. 
Do you think the place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything is clear. Yes, thank you very much. Who says that? Ah, oh, there they are. There they are. Susanna son and Lord Stronheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There is nothing further to discuss. You will return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. <gasps> Wait. What did she just say? Your return to your homeland? Suzano san! Eh. Oh, um, Mr. Narhodo. What was all that about? Ah, Mr. Narhodo. Thank you for coming to collect your coffee. What's all this about? Why are you talking about Mrs. Otto's return to her homeland? And, and, tomorrow? Tomorrow? But what about Jenny's trial? You mean, mm, she's been formally charged now. Oh dear. Miss Suzato, what's all this about? You're going back to Japan? Oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Naruhodo. Sorry. Don't con it's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as a- That's not what I asked! What happened? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh, no! Everyone in this game is fatherless. Professor Mikotaba? That guy. If I'm a... Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant. Miyanosuke Naruhodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. My name is Eugen Mikotaba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Umei University. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever... The cause is apparently unknown, and it seems he grows weaker but day by day. Uh, I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your journey's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Mr. Zato's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. So about Gina. So Gina has been charged. She'll have to appear in court. Yeah, she was formally charged a few hours ago. The day of the trial has already been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later? It's always that, isn't it? Gina? Oh, the Lestrade girl and the murder of the Bakersfield pop broker. Yes. An all too transpicious case. The pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid-robbery and shot the man in a panic. No, the yard is overstretched as it is without wasting time on these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time. Jenny would never do something like that. Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, yes, Lord Stronheart. In defense of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave now. <coughs> of course, Lord Stronheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to invade justice. The police can hold forward the time it takes to unravel all of their untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more thing, Lord Stronheart. Which is? It's Miss Lestrade's trial. 
I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But, but, that's not fair! Yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and a defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would do well to attract at Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at the local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder. Susanna's not about to leave. <sighs> Come, Mr. Narhodo. Iris, we must make haste. But Susie, you're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Narhodo's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. His sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Miss Suzato. It's a very pensive look. She's serious. I think we ought to visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. Uh. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can as a lawyer. Prison, fool. The clinkity clink. All it takes is one little village. And suddenly you're doing 50 in the clinkity clink. What? Prison, fool. You think their perfect ACT scores will protect you from prison? I don't know. I legitimately do not know. Ah! Hello again, Gina. Hey, I don't know. Why do you have that? Why is it a gun? She's got a gun. <laughs> what are you lot in here for now? To have the muzzle of that grenade launcher shoved in our faces yet again, obviously. Mm. I think I need to improve the way you load ammunition into that thing, don't I? Seems to be like a barrel load, and maybe a breech load in a gun would be thicker. Look! You can come as many times as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Side eye. <laughs> Suzato, the, the Mikotopa side eye. Gina. I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Eh? Farewell? Tomorrow, I must begin my journey back home. To Japan. I fear we may never meet again. <sighs> oh. Right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum pardon indeed. Poor Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, well. That ain't my business. Both Iris and Mr. Narahodo believe you to be innocent, Gina. They've put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. <laughs> what? It's my fault. Yeah, so I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. <sighs> right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Eh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. <gasps> what are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? You told us that everyone lies. So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. What about what you said before, Ginny? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must know Mr. Naruhodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. 
my last request as a judicial assistant. Now, yeah, well, I... I can't... Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but... Is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? The one in which Magnus McGilded was acquitted. Ah! The case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're right. Because in that trial... I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe. Will you tell us about it now? Perjury. Like you said, it all happened two months ago. The coppers got a hold of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based, and based on her testimony, Mr. McGilda was declared innocent. Yeah, well, the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. What sort of thing did you lie about? I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cubby hall. I couldn't say a thing. And then... Thud. I heard that loud thud. Like someone falling off the floor. And that's when Mr. McGilda discovered you? Yeah. He pulled me out from under the site and saw me next to the dead man. I wasn't much light to see by, but when I looked at me hands, I had the cow's blood all over them. I was so scared I couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands? In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then Mr. McGilded started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were, and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear about what I'd seen and who I'd heard. And about what he was going to do after the cow was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell no one about any of it. If I did that, he said he'd let me scop her before the copper showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. <sighs> you said McGilden made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGilden sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but... It was when I heard the thud of the cove hitting the floor. I let out a little scream, say, so couldn't help it. Mr. McGill did out there and grabbed me up by my arm. And that's when I saw it. I was on the floor next to the old geezer what had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? Do you mean... Yeah, that's it. The one what the deed took off me at Blender Banks. So the music box disc was there, on the floor of the omnibus. Not full on, McGilda spotted it straight away. He picked it up smartish and stuffed it in his, side, in his inside pocket. So that desk was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the park trotter told me, I want to mutter a word of it to no one. What did you hear? Because it was so dark under that seat in the cab. I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably that was McGilda getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh, because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. <gasps> In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilda and the victim. Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilda claimed he slept during the carriage ride. 
But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tightness and I always come to it. And your own testimony, Gina, supported his. All I could hear was the Irish man snorting. Snorting. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear them talking the whole time in low voices. What? What, what were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilder and the victim knew each other. Of course. So McGilder was lying, as I suspected. After the event. I knew it weren't gonna take long before someone raised the alarm that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGill did told me to wide on back onto the seat again. I climbed in and waited. The two cows from out top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right. And after they'd gone, Miss Gilded asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Now then, fella, what I need you to do is take this coat of mine and deposit it with a nearby pawnbroker. And for your troubles, let's see now. Hey, I'll give you ten guineas. A nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? <laughs> yep. You got it. It was Winterbanks. The coach snapped up the money and ran off to pop his coat as fast as he could. So then there was no one left in the carriage. McGill had opened the box onto the site, and he let me get out of there. And off that won't conditions. I see. What were McGill's conditions then? For letting you go free on me? Eh. Not telling us all. Not for anything. About what I saw and what I heard. And there was something else as well. There's more? Yeah. This is the most important thing, he said. I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small change in his hand. Now then, did you hear what I asked of him? Did you see anything at all? At all. You asked him to go pop your weasel, right? Aye. The fiend's taken me over the country to deposit with a pawnbroker hereabouts. And I want you, last to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? You want me to have the ticket? That's right. And I'll come fetch it from you later. Sometime within the next two months. You're to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. Alright then. And in case it might happen to be delayed at all. You're to go to the pawn shop, when you make so it is, and you're to extend the loan before the two months is up. If you forgot, the article will be forfeited and any old fiend could come along and buy it. Eh? But... But I ain't got that kind of brass. Here's five pounds. That should be enough. Hmm. Do we understand each other, lass? Don't try any funny thing funny now. If you go against me... Yeah, I get it. Good. And one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, I have no doubt. The coppers? Aye, they'll come asking you to take the stand in court to testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? What is it that he might say, and what is it that he won't? After he'd gone over it all, I packed it. Gone as far away from there as I could. He had the pawnbroker's ticket and some bushes near the scene. I went to fetch it the next day once it got dark. So McGill had planned it. All of it. And coerced Gina into giving false testimony. But why would... But where does the coat come into this? Why did he need her to pick up the coat? I bet you're ready to strain me up, eh? I lied. In that big old courtroom, I told some quarkus. 
We could do a plea bargain, plea guilty to perjury, and you'll... And the lesser crime of murder will be ignored. The thing is, he said he would make it so he couldn't live in the East End no more. What? That's what he threatened me with. What a... Wicked... What a wicked man! He knew everything what went on in back slums. He knew we had no one to look after us, and we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean Mr. McGilded would have... In an app beat. He could have had a lot of us chased out of there if he wanted. And then where we could have... Could we have gone, eh? Nowhere, that's where. So, I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. But... I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. A favor? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. But we need that paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Sholmes was shot, you see. You what? Well, he's having a big operation now, Jenny. Is it bad? Is, is he gonna be alright? Sholmes is gonna be alright, right? Heh, right? <laughs> thought you didn't care about adults. That's why I want to investigate. For Mr. Sholmes' sake, as much as anything. Right. So what you're saying is, if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy, is that it? Something like that. Mr. Zato? Y yes, of course! I have the representation papers here. I don't need no one to stick out for me, though. No lawyer or nothing. Poor Ginny. She seems so lonely. Gina's representation papers. Has been entered into the court record. Well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at the Windy Banks now. Yes. And perhaps we can come back to visit Ginny when we're done there. Eh, I guess. I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us, at least. And now I have her representation papers. No one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyway, for now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop... Us investigating at Windy Banks. Oh, although something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. E. Yeah. To be continued. Okay. Gotta check, make sure I didn't leave the stove on. <laughs>